Hello and welcome to Byju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to the big news of the day. The topic for today is the upcoming IPO of LIC. In this short and crisp analysis, we are going to understand what is the LIC, what is an IPO, and what would be the impact of this public offering on the government, the investors, and the corporation itself. But before that, let me remind you that from the 30th of April we are all set to launch our much awaited prelims crash course which is going to go live on our youtube channel from 7:30 to 9:30 pm target prelims 2022 is going to be a free crash course to help upsc aspirants who are planning to appear in this year's prelims to help revise all the important current affairs of the last one year along with few chosen topics from the previous year so don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get regular updates of the free crash course which is all set to begin from the 30th of april now coming back to the big news of the day the topic is in news because it has been widely reported that the much awaited ipo of lic is going to open next week according to reports market regulator sebi has given the approval for lic's draft red herring prospectus which is a mandatory document that a company has to bring out before going in for an ipo there has been a great deal of buzz in the markets ever since the government announced its this investment plan in the lic last year and it was expected to offload 5% of its shares but according to recent reports the lic is looking to offload around 3.5% of its share holding and apparently it has got all the regulatory approvals to go in for an ipo next week now this is an important topic because this is likely to be the biggest ever ipo in the indian markets as the lic is an insurance behemoth which is wholly owned by the government the government is planning to raise a minimum of 21000 crore rupees through this offering which would value the lic at around 6 trillion rupees and more importantly it is going to help the central government to meet its disinvestment targets see the lic or the life insurance corporation of india is a indian statutory insurance and investment corporation which is entirely owned by the government of india it was set up in 1956 through a parliamentary act that is the lic act which nationalized the insurance industry in the country for a very long time the lic had a monopoly over the insurance market in the country before the insurance sector was thrown open for competition but even today lic happens to be the market leader as you can see in this image over here and it is not just the biggest insurance company in india but it also happens to be the fifth largest insurer in the world it happens to be the fifth largest insurance company in the world in terms of life insurance premium and 10th in terms of total assets within india compared to its private peers the lic is clearly the market leader and it is considered as a financial behemoth because it is set to sell 3 out of 4 life insurance policies in the country it has built up a massive corpus of capital over the years and it is set to manage assets to the tune of 39 lakh crore rupees essentially the lic alone is managing more money than the entire mutual fund industry of india now i'm sure you can imagine how massive the lic must be today the lic is not just a insurance company but it has also become a lender and borrower for the government of the last resort and it not only holds more government bonds than the rbi itself but it is also used by the government to bail out companies and banks which are undergoing financial distress apart from this the lic also happens to be a key player in the capital market because it has invested its capital in the stock markets and it owns 4% of all the stocks that are listed in the indian stock exchanges now this goes on to show the scale and size of lic and no wonder reports of its ipo has generated a massive buzz in the indian market see ipo is a process through which a privately held company or a government owned company such as lic raises funds in the stock markets by offering its shares to the public through an ipo a private company becomes a publicly held company by offering its shares on the stock exchange which can be further traded in the secondary markets so following the initial public offering the company is listed on the stock exchange 
where its shares are open for secondary trade. And prior to going public, the company has to file its offer document or the red herring prospectus with the market regulator SEBI. The red herring prospectus is a key document as it conveys critical information to the investors about the company. Through this offer document, the investors will get to understand all information about the company, including its promoters, its projects and initiatives, its financial details and account books, the purpose of raising money from the public, and the terms of the issue. So an IPO not only allows the company to raise money from the markets, but it also allows the company to gain more credibility, increase its awareness and brand value in the market, and also to attract top talent. But this also means that the company will have to bear a bigger responsibility as it will now be accountable to its public shareholders who would have invested in the company. So what does this mega IPO mean for the government? The government is going to mop up the entire proceeds of the IPO and the LIC is not going to receive any proceeds itself. Through this IPO, the government is expected to mop up a minimum of 21,000 crore rupees to a maximum of 50,000 to 1 lakh crore rupees depending on the offer price. This clearly makes the LIC IPO the biggest ever IPO in the country and it will also make LIC the most valued company in India with regard to its market valuation which will help LIC even overtake giant companies like Reliance, TCS, etc. This is expected to boost government revenue and help bring down the government's deficit because the government is heavily relying on disinvestment receipts, which has been pegged at 65,000 crore rupees in this budget. Last year, the government had laid out an ambitious disinvestment target of 1,75,000 crore rupees. But due to poor execution and bad market conditions, the government couldn't realize the gains and the budget estimates were revised to disinvestment proceeds of just 78,000 crore rupees. So for this financial year, the government has come up with a more realistic estimate of 65,000 crore rupees through disinvestments and the government is going to use this revenue to bridge its fiscal deficit, which has been widening due to increasing expenditure and lower revenue. For the LIC, this IPO would provide for more visibility and better profile in the market and it will also push the company to be more accountable and transparent and hence it will be forced to implement better corporate governance in order to be answerable to its investors, thereby bringing more transparency to its functioning. It is also important to note that investors, especially retail investors, have shown a lot of interest in this IPO and the LIC has not only reserved 10% of its shares for its policyholders, which will be open to 25 crore of its policyholders at a discounted price. After LIC's IPO announcement, 34 lakh DMAT accounts have been opened, which market analysts predict to have been driven by retail investors' interest in LIC shares. So this clearly makes the LIC IPO one of the biggest and the most important public offerings in the Indian market. The impact of LIC's listing will be felt across the Indian market as it is clearly the biggest IPO by a very big margin, even as compared to the IPOs of Paytm, Coal India Limited, etc. The proceeds of this investment that will be cornered by the government will bring in more revenue to the government and help bridge its deficit and will also fetch better returns to the policy holders as it is going to boost LIC's efficiency. It could also lead to greater reforms of the insurance sector as LIC will become more transparent and competitive. It will put more pressure on its private peers to innovate and hence the customers are likely to benefit in terms of pricing, product features and services. This will lead to broad reforms in the insurance sector itself. This could also help improve LIC's financial position as it will become free from government interference and thus improve its financial health. And as the existing policies will be guaranteed by the government, that is through sovereign guarantee, policyholders won't be at any risk. And once the policies mature, the promised commitment would be met through the sovereign guarantees. But more importantly, the biggest impact of LIC IPO will be on the capital markets, which have seen a lot of volatility and turmoil in the recent months. The markets have taken a big hit because of the pandemic and the lockdowns. And along with this, high rates of inflation and as well as the Russia-Ukraine war have led to a flight of capital from the Indian markets. 
So market analysts are hoping that the LIC IPO is going to disrupt the market because once listed, LIC is clearly set to become the biggest company in India in terms of its market valuation, even by overtaking Reliance, DCS and the others. It's also very important to note that LIC is a major investor in all the major companies of India. And as you can see in this chart, LIC has a major shareholding in all the top Indian companies. So this is expected to give a boost to the broader Indian market. But however, the uncertainties facing the markets around the world, especially because of the Russia-Ukraine war, could also adversely affect the listing of LIC's IPO. So clearly, the IPO is also going to face a few challenges. It holds the key to the government achieving its disinvestment target of 65,000 crore rupees. But however, the market's appetite for such big issues could be a challenge. If the markets are volatile and if investors are not ready to show enough interest, it could adversely affect the market position and as well as the offering itself. As I pointed out, rising inflation in India and around the world is a cause for concern. And hence, equity markets are under pressure. And if central banks around the world raise interest rates, and especially if the US Fed raises the interest rate, it is definitely going to lead to a flight of capital from developing economies as FPIs or foreign portfolio investors are going to pull out their investments from equity markets of developing countries. These conditions would put more pressure on the secondary market and it will reduce liquidity available in the market, thereby affecting the IPO prospects of LIC. Because for such a large IPO, enough liquidity has to be available in the market, especially with institutional investors. So if the equity markets remain low and volatile, it will pose a challenge to the government's plan to come out with the IPO and it may force the government to settle for a lower offering price in order to make it more attractive for the investors. So this brings our discussion to an end. Thanks for watching.